and Bill would like to ask you to introduce them. Uh, sure. Uh, so I want to welcome Shirley Pan, who is the founder and CEO of a company called Fibulus. I don't even think I can do justice trying to explain exactly what they do. So Shirley will have to do that. And they have a product called Meta Locker, which is a bio flash drive. And so she's going to talk about um, how they use cloud computing in their company. And so Shirley, welcome to the meetup. And I should mention that uh, she's a, um, the CEO of a Skydeck company. So she's in Berkeley's Skydeck Accelerator. Um, hi, oh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great, thank you so much. Um, um, hi, um, so my name is Shirley Pans. Um, I am the CEO and co-founder of Fabulous. Uh, we are a Skydeck company. And yes, um, I actually have a CompSign background, um, but we are actually now it's more of like a life science company. And we are trying to build um, high, so, uh, high fidelity storage solutions um, and versioning control for life science. So um, I, I love histories and I love technology, um, but um, like with a computer science background, so looking into life science, I found something very interesting. Um, so like this is a timeline um, for the development of like in, uh, some part of the development of um, life science versus information science in storage. So um, like first computers was um, invented in 1950s. Actually, it was the same time um, the first freezing technology was kind of created for live cells. Um, so um, at that time, um, the computer was gigantic. It's about like two story high. Um, I graduated from UPenn. So um, actually, there ENIAC was still there. Um, they were using the punch cards um, as the storage solution, which is really bulky. Um, and people have to waste a lot of papers in order to store the, the information. And um, about when I was born, um, people are already using something more advanced um, using the floppy disk or um, using a flash drive um, uh, and the laptop has become a very like small um, and it can be put on a desktop and everybody kind of every family at least can kind of um, afford one and now like nobody talks about the the flash drive anymore people use like cloud right like that's uh, why why we are here and people use iphone think about like um all the things that you can do with just like uh, an iphone and think about like only maybe 70 years ago a uh, computer is still um two story high Think about in life science, like especially in the sense of storage. Um, when after um, the first creation like of um, freezing technology it was invented in 1950, not that much progress was made. Um, and the same as the lifestyle or the work style of life scientists, you kind of see them using the same sets of tools and um, like kind of from storage solutions for their specimens. Yeah, it's like a bunch of tools and a lot of liquid handling and it's manual. Okay, so here is a trend that I found. Information science develop really fast because information can be stored, search and share. Well, life science did not develop as fast. Well, I, I, like especially the, the work style, like how, um, life science have been working doesn't change much because life was very difficult to be stored because it's a process. You cannot just put it aside and expect it to be the same um, the next day. It will degrade. Um, and therefore, it's very uh, difficult to index and search. And therefore, it's very difficult to share because you don't know what is there and it's not um, organized in a good way. So here is where we come in. Actually, I have a, a, a little video, YouTube videos um, I want to share it. Um, hold on a second, I'm going to change um, the window for my video. So we have um, a little video that we want to share here. Can you see my YouTube screen? Okay, great. Hey, it's Andy. He is upset today because his experiment went wrong for the six times in a row. His experiment is complicated. It has 20 steps, 30 types of materials, 
An airy stage takes seven days to counter. Every time when he approached the finishing line, his sales went wrong. He had to start from the beginning to help Andy become a more efficient human being. Shirley introduced Freepo, the first version control system for lifting things. With Freepo, Andy can save lifting samples as milestones in his long experiments easily, and it only takes five seconds to save a lifting sample. Just add the sample into our bound flash drive. It has been preloaded with chemicals that can protect the sample. Insert bound flash drive into our sample digitalizer sites. Sites will register the sample and automatically detect basic information such as viability. Through Wi-Fi, data will be transferred to the local versions of Freepo, our version control system. At this moment, Andy can manually add more data and info to related to this sample, such as method and materials. Andy can also synchronize the data up to the cloud, so teammates like Jack and Mary can search and read about it. If Jack is interested in working on the milestone samples, he can send Andy a request. If Andy is happy about it, the sample will be shipped. If experiment goes wrong, Andy can go back to the last milestone instead of starting all over again. Finally, Andy no longer needs to waste time repeating experiments and has more time to be creative. He is super happy about it. Dibulus believes that more free time should be safe for scientists to think and to discover. Dibulus repository. The world's first version control system for life is based on its original creole preservation technology. For more information, please go to www.fibulous.com. So thank you very much. I think um, because we have a limited amount of time, um, I want to end my presentations here, kind of um, give you an opportunity to ask questions. Yeah. So, was somebody going to ask a question, or will I? I have okay. a question. Raise your hand. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, you said there's uh, going to be a, a crowd pre uh, preservation aspect. So basically you're saying that there's going to be a facility that stores the, um, the actual physical uh, product. Yeah. And then the information you put into, uh, into, into your cloud system, and you can take that information what, in whatever stage and reproduce those exact conditions at whatever stage. Is that what I'm interpreting this as? Uh, I think uh, uh, not exactly. So um, one thing that uh, actually I would say, while um, a lot of the projects are like related to clouds, um, actually have difficult uh, have like have the challenging parts in the clouds. The most um, difficult things um, in our project, as well as in our technology, is actually the building the storage chip. Like it's really about. Um, so we are kind of in the stage, um, like in terms of life science, is in the state that we are building silicon chips, um, like memory chips for cells and tissues. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so like you might feel surprised. Well, I really think that uh, we already have that. Like I think freezing technology, like uh, assistive, like reproductive technologies has been existing for decades. Why? Like we still have difficulty freezing cells. Yes, we, are, we still have the difficulty freezing cells. It's like for example, CAR T cell therapy. Actually, like even for big company like uh, Novartis, ten percent of the uh, patients cannot get their dose of a CAR T uh, CAR T cell to ship simply because um they don't have um like enough viability. So it's out of spec, and nobody will not be able to charge it for their drug. So it's like a huge barrier in terms of like if we in life science are advancing to the future of like cellular therapy, like cellular drugs uh, per se. And like people will, especially for primary cells, it's very difficult for people to freeze them. So like now, like um, for, for life scientists, especially um, like medical or clinical researchers, they, uh, whenever they have like a piece of tumors, like for example, like cut off like from the surgery, they have to wait outside of the surgery room then get the tumor and then do all the experiments right away on that day. So it's like um, very like a lot lengthy kind of experiments. Um, if they cannot use up the kind Kind of um like uh, tumor sample, they have to wait for weeks again in order to get another piece of like sample. 
um, collected from the surgery. So that's like why we really want to uh, reduce, reduce the waste and also help um, scientists to kind of um, view a, a, a inventory of um, of sample. And that's the first step. The second step will be like they have been so working like in our day-to-day -day, it's um, like work it's so easy to just like click and save buttons and uh, just archive your work and milestone your work if you're programming but life scientists don't have the luxury like every single time they once they start uh, an experiment they have to complete it otherwise the cell would die or they would change another phase which would be would not be suitable or comparable to what they want to do um, so what we want to do is to really being able to snap like kind of get the snaps like or freeze them at the certain stage and then confidently recover them. So like, we already get like a higher, um, like a performance than com conventional method. But like uh, compared to a lot of them, the cloud computing related projects, we actually have a lot to do on the physical uh, product, which we, we see like uh, we are maybe like Intel, um, like trying to create storage like solutions for live specimens. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Because I was wondering, it's like, you can't really store all of this electronically. You could store the information, but the physical sample, it's, there's also the reproducibility of the experiments. Like, how does that work? So. Yeah, yeah. That's so uh, you actually uh, asked a great question. Um, so like what, actually, when, when we first asked to uh, present here, I was like a little bit some have like um, kind of don't know like uh, kind of what I where we suitable because um, uh, coming out from a computer science background, I actually advocate for um, the physical storage of um, like memory of material instead of just using big data. And this is very um, kind of evident um, in this COVID-19 situations. For example, like especially for live specimen, like before COVID-19 happens, there is no big data I like, uh, recorded anything about um, like COVID because nobody knows how to detect it and there will be no like abstractions of like such a disease. However, the only way that we can figure and there is like a disease and how to trace it back and really figure out how it evolved all the time is having a physical specimen and that's what we are advocating that and we see cloud, cloud computing as a way for us to like um, connect on this um, distributed kind of like bio bank and uh, kind of um, bio bank and repository together so that more people will be able to collaborate just like the way we work on github yeah Yes, and I, I see in the questions um, also in the in the in in the chat. Seems there are maybe uh, applications in preventing detecting scientific for if the result experiment. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I I love it. I love this uh, suggestion. This is actually really good, and we think about it uh, exactly. And uh, some uh, actually we have talked to uh, blockchains, um, like people working in blockchains, and if on every single step, like no matter from transportations, like for example, like uh, in processing. Um, the, the sample, we can actually record what types of like reagents, what kind of steps is actually um, done on the sample. So we'll be able to better quality checks um, the sample and we'll be able to chase back on a lot of the, the lineages. Like for example, one of the most important things about um, like the scientific, like uh, biospecimen bio material is the lineage. Like where does this come from? Like even in the, think about it this way, like cruel biology or the, 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 uh, uh, the the ability that people are able to save living by a specimen is short. It's 70, uh, 70 years, like in really short periods, like because in the past, people don't even have a freezer. They don't have like a, a stable um, kind of freezing um, technology that enable them to like store live specimens. And now like they just started to have that. And that's why we kind of um, get really interested and excited in this opportunity and hope that we'll be able to do something um, interesting and um, meaningful, impactful, yeah. Terrific, thank you very much. That was really interesting, um, tremendous.